In the headlines of this hour on VTV News, Politburo meeting discusses Ho Chi Minh City planning. And later on, General Secretary and State President receives overseas Vietnamese. And in our world news, a Russian president holds meeting on border region situation. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Good morning. It is currently 8 a.m. local time, and you're tuning in to 30 minutes of VTV News. I'm Lydon Lê with the latest updates. Now, Party General Secretary and State President Tho Lâm chaired a meeting of the Politburo on Friday to discuss the master plan for Ho Chi Minh City in the 2021 to 2024 period, with a vision to 2050. More to follow. The Politburo scrutinized and essentially agreed on the major and important guidelines and viewpoints guiding planning work for Ho Chi Minh City. General Secretary and State President Tolum said the scheme must adhere to the guidelines of the party and the resolutions of the party's central committee, bullet bureau and secretariat. It must also comply with legal regulations, especially the law on planning, while being consistent with the master plans of the country, southeastern region and sectors. General Secretary and State President Tolum noted that the plan needs to clearly demonstrate the particularly important role and position of Ho Chi Minh City as an economic, cultural, educational, training, and scientific, technological center for Vietnam, and is working to establish itself as a center for economy, finance, services, culture, education, training, science, technology, and innovation in Southeast Asia and Asia at large, and to become a globally competitive city. He stressed the need to optimize land, water, underground and air spaces. This includes appropriately arranging urban, service, industrial and rural areas, as well as developing modern transportation systems befitting a future global city. The top leader also stressed the importance of balancing economic and cultural growth while keeping people at the heart of development. Specific plans must be made public once approved, allowing people and businesses to be informed, respond, and provide feedback. This planning is intended to serve the public. It is essential to carefully plan roads, government agencies, and public works. Additionally, creating a model to showcase the planning will help people understand and follow the city's development and direction. At the meeting, Politburo asked the Ho Chi Minh City Party Committee to intensify efforts to quickly complete the plan. Once the master plan is approved, the city must implement mechanisms and policies to unlock and utilize all available resources for the scheme's successful execution. General Secretary and State President Tho Lâm met with a delegation of overseas Vietnamese attending the Fourth World Conference of Overseas Vietnamese and the 2024 Forum of Vietnamese Overseas Vietnamese Intellectuals and Experts on Friday. At the meeting, he emphasized the important role of overseas Vietnamese and called for their continued contributions to Vietnam's development. On behalf of the party and state leaders, General Secretary and President Talam affirmed that the overseas Vietnamese community is an integral part of the nation. He emphasized that Vietnam warmly welcomes the valuable contributions of overseas Vietnamese as they work together to build a prosperous country. The leader noted that after nearly 40 years of doi mui, renewal, the country has achieved significant and historic milestones. The scale and level of the economy have been elevated. Both the material and spiritual well-being of the people have greatly improved. He highlighted that Vietnam is striving to become a developed, high-income country by 2045. For a country to develop, it requires unity and cooperation, harnessing the collective strength of its people. 
This is crucial for maintaining peace, independence, territorial integrity, and stability. The aim is to improve lives and meet the growing demands of all individuals, ensuring no one is left behind. It's only by allowing everyone to reach their full potential can the nation truly progress. General Secretary and President Talam emphasized Vietnam's focus on mobilizing resources to achieve its goals, highlighting the vital contributions of overseas Vietnamese. He called on the six million overseas Vietnamese to help build a strong, prosperous nation. Additionally, he expressed hope that experts, intellectuals, scientists, and those with access to modern technology and advanced knowledge would continue to contribute their wisdom, experience, and expertise to Vietnam's development and progress. During a farewell meeting with Sri Lankan Ambassador Shashu Mendes on Friday, General Secretary and State President Tho Lâm praised the ambassador's role in strengthening bilateral relations. He emphasized Vietnam's commitment to its long-standing friendship with Sri Lanka. He suggested increasing delegation exchanges, enhancing agricultural and cultural cooperation, and promoting people-to-people -people exchanges in preparation for the 55th anniversary of diplomatic relations next year. The Sri Lankan ambassador affirmed the significance of the bilateral relationship and expressed his continued dedication to fostering cooperation. On this occasion, General Secretary and State President Tho Lâm extended an invitation to Sri Lankan President Ranil Wickremesinghe to visit Vietnam soon. Politburo member and Prime Minister Phan Minh Ching, head of the Subcommittee for Socio-Economic Affairs of the 14th National Party Congress, chaired the third meeting of the Subcommittee on Friday. Take a look. The Subcommittee's working results since the last meeting were reviewed. The Committee also provided feedback on a draft report covering five years of implementing the Socio-Economic Development Strategy for 2021-2030. Additionally, draft orientations and tasks for socio-economic developments during 2026-2030 were presented for discussion before the submission to the Politburo and the 10th session of the 13th Annual Party Central Committee. In his opening remarks, Prime Minister Pham Minh Chieng noted that since its second meeting, the subcommittee has actively worked to fulfill numerous tasks ensuring both progress and quality. The government leader asked participants at the meeting to analyze the regional and international context, its impact on Vietnam and domestic challenges. He also urged them to assess the implementation of the 13th National Party Congress's resolution, highlighting progress on overall goals and comparing results with those of other countries in the region and worldwide. Institutional breakthroughs are needed to mobilize all resources, especially private and non-state ones, and to strengthen public-private cooperation. This will boost financial strength and investor confidence. Additionally, we must effectively use natural resources while ensuring environmental and social harmony. Promoting innovation through technology 4.0, AI, and emerging industries, and investing in the cultural and entertainment sectors are also essential. Prime Minister Pham Minh Chieng also told subcommittee members to identify socio-economic development bottlenecks and devise new targets suited to the current context. He emphasized the need for breakthrough solutions to achieve fundamental and strategic goals. These goals include turning Vietnam into a more developed country with modern industry and upper middle income by 2030 and further advancing it to a developed, high-income nation by 2045. On Friday morning, at the invitation of Lao Prime Minister Son Tsai Sipandon, Prime Minister Phan Minh Ching attended and delivered a speech online at the third ASEAN Women Leaders Summit. He emphasized the great contributions of women, who are both the foundation of each family and pioneers in promoting the sustainable development of society. The Prime Minister shared with the summit Vietnam's results in implementing its national gender equality goals in 2023, with the gender equality index increasing by 11 levels compared to 2022, to promote women's potential, strengthen the care economy, and foster self-reliance towards the ASEAN community after 2025. 
The Prime Minister suggested that ASEAN countries focus on the three strengthenings regarding the position and role of women. The National Assembly's Standing Committee concluded its 36th session on Friday afternoon. National Assembly Chairman Chen Tengben said that through the session, the Standing Committee was able to give their opinions on personnel work and discussed a number of draft laws and resolutions. The Standing Committee also conducted Q&A sessions on a number of issues. Based on these sessions, the Standing Committee will issue a resolution on Q&A activities to guide relevant agencies' implementation. The National Assembly Chairman announced that the upcoming 8th National Assembly session is expected to pass 13 draft laws and deliberate on 13 others. <laughs> Coming up next on VTV News, AI transforms banking sector to foster growth and competitiveness. And later on, Ho Chi Minh City trains first 60 Vietnamese drivers for Metro Line Number 1. Welcome back to VTV News Live. Now, Vietnam is considered one of the fastest growing markets for artificial intelligence or AI in Southeast Asia. The country's banking sector is undergoing a transformative period with the rapid adoption of AI. The application of AI is revolutionizing how banks operate and serve their customers, significantly impacting banks' growth and competitiveness while enhancing the customer experience. Instead of requiring employees to review each document manually, the bank automates the entire credit scoring analysis process using AI. Additionally, the bank integrates AI solutions into various services and processes, supporting its decision-making, optimizing customer service, and enhancing productivity. We have automated up to 50% of credit approvals for retail customers and 30% for corporate customers. There are processes, such as the LC issuance process, where we do not need people at all. The Financial Service State of the Nation Survey 2023 by Finastra shows that 4% of Vietnamese financial institutions have deployed AI in their activities. Some banks are now embracing the latest AI trend generative artificial intelligence, Gen AI, which boosts productivity by 50 to 60 percent and enhances customer personalization. We understand customers' habits, preferences, behaviors, and needs. Through this, we strive to provide customized services optimized for individual customer needs. Gen AI can automatically generate code, testing, and developing software. With Gen AI, creating new software can be about 30 to 40 percent faster than traditional methods. To invest in breakthrough AI applications, several banks have focused on databases, infrastructure, and AI talent. We will soon deploy infrastructure such as H100 and cloud platforms like Azure, AWS, and GCP to support our AI initiative. We have strategies to attract talent from overseas, such as Singapore, London, and Australia, as well as from around the world. According to a survey by Roland Berger, a global management consultancy, AI capabilities could unlock 1 trillion USD in global banking revenue pools by 2030. Experts say investing in the right resources and a solid AI roadmap will boost banks' breakthroughs, competitiveness, and the digital economy in Vietnam. Changes in consumer preferences have driven agricultural producers to focus on promoting clean and delicious foods. To ensure the quality of products, many Vietnamese food and agricultural producers have invested in deep processing chains to diversify and ensure the preservation of products. More in the following. 
This batch of dried jackfruit is prepared for Southeast Asian markets. The factory has gained a reputation and exported orders through its technologies for processing fresh jackfruit into refined products. Our first batch of refined jackfruit went to South Korea. Our trading partners keep ordering more. They like the quality and convenience of our products. Deep processing not only increases product value and attracts consumers, but also proactively addresses the challenge of preserving raw materials for farmers. In the near future, we'll explore new product types, like freeze-drying, to enhance the value of deep processing. The authorities have called on factories and enterprises to collaborate in production. Our aim is to strengthen the field of deep processing further and increase export value. Vietnam produces about 31 million tons of fruit and vegetable products each year, but less than 20% of these undergo deep processing. If producers improve their processing methods, export turnover will likely surpass the 5.6 billion USD target. Continuous heavy rainfall from Thursday afternoon into the evening caused severe floodings and landslides in Huabing province. The downpour reopened an old landslide on the road to Doi Tung in Kuihua commune, collapsing more than 100 uh, meters volume of soil and rock and damaging electric poles. In Tanlak district, the heavy rains triggered landslides on several roads in the highland communes. To ensure traffic safety, local authorities deployed leveling, uh, leveling machines to clear the road temporarily. They also posted warning signs in areas at risk of landslides. Nearly 60 train drivers trainees from Urban Railway Company Limited No. 1 in Ho Chi Minh City practiced real train driving techniques on Metro Line No. 1 to, from Bentang to Sui Tien. This marks a significant milestone in the project's training and technology transfer process. At Longbin Station in Thu Duc City, Ho Chi Minh City, train driver trainees have begun applying their theoretical training and simulator practice from Vietnam and Japan to real-world tasks, including pre-operation checks, train control, depot shunting, and emergency response. We have already been taught the material by our instructors and understand it clearly. Today, we get to practice, and it feels great. Learning in a simulation is not as realistic as being on an actual train. The line's operation includes 58 train drivers, 24 dispatchers, and about 300 station staff. For practical training, contractor Hitachi has begun handing over the CP3 package's 11 electromechanical systems, covering trains, tracks, tickets, information, signals, equipment, workshops, monitoring, control, and data collection. Based on the trial results and report, the investor will submit the dossier to the Railway Department for Safety Assessment and to the State Acceptance Council to finalize acceptance, issue the safety certificate, and launch the project. The Ho Chi Minh City Urban Railway Line 1 project is now 98.38% complete. The management board and contractors aim to finish it by the end of 2024 to meet travel needs and address urban traffic issues. A conference was held in Hanoi to review the Vietnam Coast Guard's five-year implementation of a program supporting fishers at sea. During this period, the Coast Guard forces have helped build safe areas, promoted development, reduced hunger and poverty, and contributed to the establishment of new rural areas. They have conducted over 260 information sessions, educating more than 171,000 caters, party members, citizens, fishermen and students about maritime laws and regulations. Additionally, they have provided various forms of support to over 10,000 vessels and 72,000 fishermen. The People's Committee of Taiping Province has recently issued a decision to establish the map for the Tianhai Wetland Nature Reserve in the Tianhai District, Taiping Province. The map clearly defines three important subzones the strict protection zone, the buffer zone, and the ecological restoration zone. 
The Tianhai Wetland Nature Reserve is situated outside dikes 5 and 6 in Tianhai District, bordered on three sides by rivers and to the east by the sea. This location is advantageous for developing mangrove forest on tidal flats to preserve land, combat climate change and create livelihoods for local residents. Clearly defining the reserve's location boundaries and area is a crucial step to achieving the goal of marine-oriented economic development, expanding space and ensuring environmental protection. We base our work on three main pillars, the state's legal basis, the biodiversity conservation law, and Decree 66 on the conservation and sustainable development of wetlands, particularly considering the natural processes. The Taiping Department of Natural Resources and Environment was tasked with investing and in assessing the reserve's location, area and boundaries. Following legal procedures and documents, they defined 33 coordinate points for the reserve, covering a total area of 12,500 hectares. The buffer zone is defined by 40 coordinate points and situated 1,000 meters from the Tianhai Wetland Nature Reserve's boundary. We identified the forest area as the central development zone and core area for the reserve. While the area remains unchanged, the location has been adjusted. This ensures the protection of the critical area and zone. With over 52 kilometers of coastline, Taibing province has a significant advantage in marine economic development. Establishing the reserve's location and boundaries will also facilitate the development of mangrove forests, which will help protect the wetland ecosystem and biodiversity, and shield the coastal area from wind, waves, and storms. Coming up next in our world news. Russian President holds meeting on border region situation. And later on, breakthrough in lunar soil water extraction. Now moving on to our world news, Russian President Vladimir Putin convened a meeting with government members and regional leaders on Friday to discuss the security situation in three regions bordering Ukraine. The meeting was held out, uh, online. Now President Putin stated that Moscow had informed the UN nuclear safety watchdog about the situation at Russia's Kursk nuclear power plant. The acting governor of the Kursk region reported that the situation at the nuclear power plant was stable. Over 100,000 people have been evacuated from the conflict zone. Earlier, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky indicated that fighting was still ongoing and that Ukraine was reinforcing its forces in the east of the country. He also urged international partners to provide ammunition to Ukraine in a timely ma manner. Venezuela's Supreme Justice Tribunal on Thursday ratified President Nicolas Maduro victory in the July 28th presidential election. The tribunal was, has certified the uh, electoral documents and confirmed the results announced by the National Electoral Council, naming Maduro as the winner. On August the 2nd, the National Electoral Council announced that incumbent Six. President Maduro had Six. won with 51.95% of the vote. However, opposition parties declared that they did not recognize the results. The Supreme Court of Venezuela affirmed that the opposition parties had not presented any evidence or documentation related to allegations of fraud in the July 28th election. Five Chinese nationals were confirmed dead in a small plane crash in Thailand's eastern province of Changchengshao on uh, Thursday, according to the Chinese embassy in Thailand. The Cessna Caravan C-208B aircraft operated in Thai flying service departed from Suvarna Bumi Airport in Bangkok at 2.46 p.m. local time. The aircraft lost contact with the air traffic control center just 11 minutes after takeoff and subsequently crashed into a swampy area. Witnesses described seeing the plane fall from the sky and explode with a loud noise. There were no survivors in the incident, which involved five Hong Kong-China passengers and four Thai crew members. Mm -hmm. 
In a monumental leap forward for space research, Chinese scientists have unveiled pioneering methods to extract ample water from lunar soil following an analysis of samples retrieved by the country's Chang'e 5 mission, marking a major breakthrough which could revolutionize future moon missions and advance plans for a potential lunar base. Researchers at the Ningbo Institute of Materials Technology and Engineering under the Chinese Academy of Sciences have formulated an innovative approach which would be capable of yielding up to 76 kilograms of water from around one ton of lunar soil, setting the stage for the establishment of future lunar research stations. As we heated the titanium iron ore in lunar soil, we were instead astonished by the bubbles filling the screen. Lunar soil while earlier investigations focused on identifying traces of water within lunar soil minerals, the scarcity of water content posed challenges for its extraction and application on the lunar surface. Consequently, experts say the exploration of novel lunar water resources and extraction methodologies will undoubtedly steer the course of future lunar exploration endeavors. The naturally occurring water on the moon is typically between 0.0001% and 0.02%, making extraction incredibly difficult. Through this method, the water content we obtain can exceed 5% of the lunar soil weight, at least 250 times more than the natural water content. In the future, if we conduct research on the moon, we can utilize this method to meet the fundamental needs of human survival. The work was completed thanks to the samples brought back by the Chang'e 5 probe, which returned to Earth in December 2020 after retrieving a total of 1,731 grams of primarily rocks and soil from the lunar surface. Up next, let's have a look at the weather forecast for Vietnam and other locations in the world. And that is all that we have for this hour on BTV News. To rewatch our program, you can visit our website, our YouTube channel, or download a mobile app, BTV Go for more. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.